Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to look at simplifying fractions using the greatest common factor, the GCF method. If you haven't seen the GCF video, please go back and look at that on the playlist because we're going to use that technique to simplify fractions. So what does simplifying fractions actually mean? Right, You have that instruction like simplify if necessary or just simplify. It basically means find an equivalent fraction with smaller numbers. So find me another fraction that has the same value, but the numbers are smaller. So remember, the fractions still have to be equal, but now the numbers just look smaller. And if you still are unfamiliar with the equivalent fractions, there is a video on what equivalent fractions are. Basically, they're just fractions that, although they look different, they represent the same information, the same value. So in this case, we're looking for a specific fraction that is smaller, but it's still the same value. And we'll see what that looks like. So this is the type of question you might come across where it says just simplify 2 over 8. So that just means find me another fraction, find me an equivalent fraction but with smaller numbers. And how do we do that using the GCF method? Well first thing we want to do is find the greatest common factor of the numerator and the denominator. So let's find the GCF of 2 and, the G and 8. First off we're going to list all the factors of 2 one way to find all the factors of 2 is to list all the ways that you can multiply to get to, so 1 and 2. Remember, factors are just numbers that can divide that number, but will not give you a remainder. So 1 divides 2, and 2 divides 2, and you won't get a remainder. And that's, that's it. That's the only way to get 2. Now, for 8, we have 1 times 8, so 1 and 8 are factors. 2 and 4 are factors, and that's it, because those are the only ways you can get 8 using multiplication of whole numbers. Now let's see which one is the greatest factor that they have in common. Well, they all have the number 1 in common. I use the number 1. But they also have the number 2 in common. But we are going to select the greatest one. So we're going to select the number 2. And that's the number that we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by to find our equivalent fraction with smaller numbers. So let's, let's take care of that now. So our new fraction, we're going to divide. We're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by two. We're dividing by two because that is the GCF, right? This two, I obtained it from here. Now two divided by two, that's going to be just one, and eight divided by two is four. So now I have simplified the fraction. Two eighths is the same as one fourth. 1 fourth is equivalent, but it is a smaller looking fraction because it has smaller numbers. And if we actually draw this out, we will see that, in fact, we have, let's see, 2 eighths, looks like this, All right, that's 8, 1 fourth, 2 eighths, let's see, 1, two and here one fourth they're the same so again that's what it means to find to simplify find me an equivalent fraction such so find an equivalent fraction where the numbers appear smaller and the way you do that is you find the greatest common factor of the numerator and denominator and then you divide the numerator and denominator by the gcf and you get your simplified version of it let's try a couple more examples let's see Example, simplify, again, the instructions will usually just say simplify, simplify, and then they'll give you the fraction, or sometimes it says simplify if necessary. Let's say 6 over 9. Once again, we go and we find, first off, the factors of 6 and 9. Remember, there's a video on finding the GCF. 1 and 6, 2 and 3, 1 and 9. 3 and 3. We look for the greatest one that they have in common. In this case, it's 4. So that's the, I mean, it's 3. So that's the number that we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by. So we're going to simplify our fraction. We're going to find an equivalent fraction that has smaller numbers or smaller looking numbers. Right? But it's still an equivalent fraction. It's still the same value. So I'm going to divide this one and divide this one by 3, both top and bottom, so 3 and 3. And I end up with 
that's going to be 2 and that's going to be a 3. So I've simplified 6 over 9 into 2 thirds. If we draw the area model, we can verify that it is in fact the same. So here's, let's see. This is going to be 6 ninths, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's going to be 2 thirds, so 1, 2. So that's to verify that they're equivalent. Again, with time, you won't need to draw the area models, but this is just to um, convince ourselves that it is, in fact, equivalent. They represent the same data, except that one is a smaller looking version of the other one. Um, one last example. Go 18 and 12. So let's see. Last example. Again, always try these examples out on your own after we are finished. You know, just to get more practice in. So simplify. Let's go with 8 twelves. As before, we need to look for a number that we can divide both the numerator and denominator by, and that's where the GCF comes into play. So here's 8. Find all the factors of 8. So 1 and 8, 2 and 4, and that's it. For 12, we have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. You want to pick the greatest one, the greatest one being 4 in this case. So we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 4. And we end up with Let's see, divided by 4 as well. It's going to be a 2, and it's going to be a 3. So 2 thirds is a simplified version of 8 twelfths. All right, so I hope that helps you out. If it did, please subscribe and like the video. And to just summarize, to simplify a fraction just means find another fraction that is equivalent to it, except with smaller numbers. Uh, use the GCF method, find the greatest common factor, and then divide the fraction, both the numerator and the denominator by that number, and you'll have your um, simplified version of it. Right, well, I'll see you next time, and again, like and subscribe if you found this video helpful.